Welcome to Time Beat Breaking News Channel. Here are our breaking news today. 1. An accident related to a fire ignition system in a Tokyo parking garage left four people dead. 2. Uyghur people from Xinjiang must work under political checks and strict half military. Japan. An accident related to a fire ignition system in a Tokyo parking garage left four people dead. On Thursday in a garage in Tokyo, a total of six workers were changing the ceiling lining in Shinjuku when the fire suppression system was accidentally activated, killing four building maintenance workers. Because they were locked in an enclosed space with a high concentration of carbon dioxide, they were unable to survive. The victims were both between the ages of 30 and 50, and the other two were in critical condition, being treated at the hospital one of them was in 20 years old. Rescuers measured the carbon dioxide density in the parking garage to be about 20%, several hundred times higher than normal, said the Tokyo Fire Department. After the crash, one in six workers tried to escape from the garage and sought help from someone in charge of maintenance work. According to the fire department authorities, when a fire suppression system of this type activates, there is a warning message urging evacuation and carbon dioxide is released after a certain period of time. In January, two maintenance workers died in the underground parking lot of a building in Tokyo's Minato Ward apparently due to a malfunction of a fire extinguishing device using carbon dioxide. China Uyghur people from Xinjiang must work under political checks and strict half-military. The Xinjiang government runs an official labor transfer program, according to its 2019 five-year plan so as to provide more employment opportunities for the surplus rural labor force. On Chinese websites, there are dozens of postings advertising Uyghur labor in batches of 50 to 100 workers. Those adverts suggest tight political and social controls. One states that the security of workers will be guaranteed by the government. Workers from Xinjiang needed to be examined politically before they could be transferred. The local government of the receiving province would also do a political examination. All workers would be accompanied by supervisors and under half-military management. The owner of the factory, a seafood processing plant, said that all the Uyghur workers had returned home to Xinjiang because of the pandemic and that reports of forced labor were nonsense. If workers wished to leave the factory, the owner said that the company would take them in two buses. 12 police officers and Communist Party officials then arrived. The accompanying announcement says that their arrival will help alleviate poverty and the integration of the national family. Thank you for watching. We help you stay up to date all the news hourly. Please subscribe our channel to follow up the latest one.